Alonso aquí en Auto 060 and uh, again we're going to switch to English because this is one of my favorite parts of the show when I get to share uh, all the information and cool things that we do with my colleagues. So Michelle Naranjo, Editor-in-Chief of Auto Vital. How are you Michelle? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? Excellent, thank you. So Happy New Year. I think we can still uh, say that uh, all through January, at least through the Detroit Auto Show. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's gonna be, it's gonna go fast again, as always it is, uh, especially with the auto show season that starts uh, next week in Detroit. But uh, before we do that, I, uh, I wanted to uh, share uh, all the information that uh, it's in autobytel.com uh, with our audience. And Michelle, uh, I, I, I draws my attention to the car year award from uh, out of Vitel. so can you tell us a little bit about first uh, the process i mean first a little bit for people who don't know what out of Vitel is and then i like, go a little bit into the process of how do you choose the, the best cars of the year sure well out of Vitel was actually started in 1996 the first first automotive research site on the internet um it was the very first that provided a way for people to be able to go in read about cars see pictures of cars and then they can submit a lead to a dealer you know get a price quote that kind of thing. They can look at used car inventory on there. Um, we've been doing these awards now for three years, and what we do is we get all of our editors to nominate three cars each in each category, and there's 11 main categories. We actually combine minivans and um, station wagons together. Um, <clears throat> and then once we get all of those nominations, we take the ones, the, the top three out of each category, and then we vote on which is the best out of that category. And so then we get our category winners. And then we pick the ones with the overall number of votes in the cars category, so luxury cars, vans, compacts, all of those, and then and convertible. That becomes the car of the year, and then same thing in the truck and SUV categories, and that becomes our truck of the year. Yeah, and uh, obviously there's a lot to pick from, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and, and, and it's, it's tough because, I mean, basically there aren't any bad cars anymore, right? I mean, I always say this, but it's, it's true, and I think uh, people who are looking into buying cars and that should know that. I mean, there are different trims of cars, but basically there isn't a bad car anymore, I don't think. Absolutely. There's, there's really not a bad car. And, and because of the resurgence of the, in, the industry in the last three years, there are so many new excellent cars. Yeah. So can we go? I mean, uh, you have a lot, but let's let's try to pick the like the best from your list. So um, why don't you go on like the best overall, I guess, and then we we'll go through the other categories a little bit. Okay. So our best overall is kind of an interesting story. It ended up being the Jaguar F-Type and the Land Rover Range Rover, and that's kind of a, a, an incredible like double headline from a single company. That really shows how. Jaguar Land Rover has had a comeback, you know, for a British manufacturer that wasn't doing so well. They've really come back strong, and both cars, the car and the Range Rover, are fantastic. Yeah, I had a chance to drive both, and actually, I think we 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 were in some of the press events for those two cars, and and yeah, I I, I agree with you. I mean, like especially the F Type is such a uh, an improvement from whatever they had before this model. I mean, it's just like amazing. I, I drove the uh, the high performance model uh, recently, and I was just like stunned. And everybody looks at it, and everybody likes it, and uh, and like the roar of the engine, and every single detail in that car is amazing. Yeah, it just it sounds amazing. And we actually had a few people ask us why Corvette didn't win Car of the Year, and it's kind of interesting why. What happened with the Jaguar F Type this year? was it won our convertible car of the year category, but it also had votes in sports car of the year and luxury car of the year. <clears throat> it placed in the top three in sports car of the year as well, which actually put it above the total number of votes to, and it beat the Stingray for the car of the year. Yeah, and uh, they're coming up with a coupe, so maybe it's gonna be a tough uh, decision for next year, but that's another yeah. story, I guess. So you said that there were like, what, 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 what were the other uh, two cars in the top three for the best car overall in autobytel.com? Um, it was, <clears throat> excuse me, um, we had, uh, let's see, the, the Jaguar F-Type, the... Um, maybe I guess the, cor the Corvette, since you, you, you said like some people were asking about it, right? Yep, it was it was the Corvette, and then the other one was the. Let me think which one it was. I think it might have been the um, because that one we actually don't rank the top three in the overall, but I think that one was um, the S8. 
Oh yeah, okay. So uh, so the F Type for the best car overall, and then the truck, the Range Rover Sport. I mean, really, really. Uh, I mean, I completely agree with you guys. So uh, let's go to another uh, other categories that uh, stand out. Like for example, sedan of the year, the Mazda Six. Mazda is another company that has come up like in a huge way recently. Absolutely, and what's interesting about the Mazda is that it beat two cars that are, I guess you can call them aspirational luxury cars, but I think the manufacturers actually consider them luxury cars, right? The Kia Cadenza and the Buick Regal GS, both fantastic cars. I think that Kia is one of the best looking cars on, on the road right now, um, but the Mazda came out on top, and the Mazda is absolutely great looking as well. Yeah, and uh, it's something that it's it's very interesting to me. Like I think the gap between like the the regular brands in case of, for example, like Toyota and Lexus, Nissan, Infiniti, and Honda and Acura. I think the gap between the regular car and the luxury car is like shrinking very very fast. And I, I, I and again with Mazdas, I think like the the, the level of uh, not only performance and detail. I mean luxury wise, I think you get a lot for the money. Absolutely, people have come to expect a lot for, for there's, when they're spending money on a car and you know when you can get something like a Nissan Versa Note with that you know with technology that you have in an infinity it, it's really that gap is getting smaller and smaller and smaller yeah so truck of the year Ram 1500 which seems to be winning every single award there is I know it, it actually won last year for us as well um, and it's it's just a great truck you know it's it's so aggressive looking, and it, it's, you know, very handsome. Um, it beat out the, the Silverado and the Sierra, which of course are the twins. They're, they're basically the same picture, yeah. with just a little bit different look going to them. Um, I think the exciting thing going to be coming up this year is, of course, next week we're going to see the new F-150, and that then I think the Ram's going to have something to, uh, it's going to have to work a little harder. To <laughs> yeah. But I think for the for the F one fifty, we're not gonna actually see much because like the cool thing or the newest thing for that car is the structure of the car, which is gonna be all aluminum, which is gonna uh, obviously um, uh, improve the, all the numbers because of the uh, reduce of weight and all that. But I mean, uh, yeah, it's gonna be and it's it's very astonishing when you think about like the F one fifty is uh, the most sold vehicle in the states for like thirty six years. So <laughs> tough competition there. Absolutely, and it's, you know, the, the great thing about these trucks is, like, our truck of the year, our pickup truck of the year two years ago was the F-150 EcoBoost, and that that kind of changed everything in the, in the truck world, because suddenly that really the truck that got great gas mileage and more towing power. Yeah, so another category that, that, that uh, is, I, I guess is very hot and is one of the fastest growing segments in the industry crossover, Subaru Forester. Uh, I mean, Subaru not only put out like great press events like you and me experienced in Iceland last year, but I mean, the product is amazing. To think that they're selling more cars than Volkswagen, it's really amazing. It, it is, it is, it's mind-blowing, but the Forester, it, and it's just that, it's that favorite car that people go to over and over again. It's, you know, we have a very good relationship with Subaru and Auto by Tell because one of the things that we do is we, you know, connect dealers with buyers. And sometimes buyers, you know, might get in touch with a dealer and they decide to switch brands or they go to a different model or whatever. Subaru buyers, when they get in contact with a dealer, have like the highest rate of actually buying a Subaru. They're incredibly loyal and passionate about the brand. Yeah, and uh, a, a, a funny thing, of kind of curious thing with Subaru is that uh, it used to be that those cars were very popular in the West Coast, in Colorado, in like where you really needed four-wheel drive uh, vehicles. But now I think they're like becoming more popular because, I mean, just like the cars are fantastic and the, the, the value of it with or without uh, four-wheel drive is fantastic. The cross track that we tried in Iceland was amazing, I think. I think it's going to be in your list next year. Absolutely, it was so capable, and and and, and it was, um, you know, the fun thing about the Forester. I think we did that event together too. Was that when it has the they now have the turbo option. So now it's not just that family car; it's that fun to drive family car where you, it has a lot of zip to it. Yeah. Uh, so you also have awards for the Audi S8, which is kind of surprising because the Mercedes-Benz S class came in this year too, and uh, I mean it's it's pretty good car. So what was the thinking behind that? You know, that was the, the votes were incredibly close in that category. I couldn't believe it. I thought that if I could have predicted, I would have said the S-Class would have won. 
Um, but in the end, the S-8 actually ends up getting more votes. And I, I think, you know, like we were talking about that shrinking gap, the level of in luxury of how amazing these cars are becoming is, is putting them all pretty close together. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. So, Michelle, uh, believe it or not, we're running out of time. We have like less than a minute left. So, can you tell our audience what else can uh, they find in autobytel.com and uh, what what cool things do you do there? Sure, at autobytel.com we have um, we do daily news, we do car buying guides, we do a lot of fun articles that are you know the best cars to get married in in Las Vegas and stuff like that. But we um, we do a lot of serious research and reviews. We try to drive. Um, all of the important cars that people are shopping for and write, you know, full reviews and do photo galleries so people can actually put an experience of what it is that they're looking at and um, make a decision. Excellent. And so out of Vital, you said like they can get not only the information but also get like uh, direct links to the dealerships nearby where they, where they live, right? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Michelle Naranjo from autobytel.com. And uh, I hope uh, we have uh, we can share more experiences this year in 2014. Speaking of the cars that are going to appear in your list next year for uh, all the awards that, that, that you pick. And uh, it's going to be a tough job again because I think there's a lot of good cars coming up uh, for 2015, right? <laughs> it's confusing. Absolutely. I know it's hard to say 2015. I can't get my habit. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Michelle Naranjo, uh, Chief Editor for AutoByTel.com. Esto es Alto 060. Esto es Cristina Radio Network. Ya regresamos con el siguiente segmento.